Last year, after Robbie and Thomas had hiked the Lost Creek Wilderness, we were planning on doing a mountain climb up Long's Peak, one of Colorado's famous 14ers. Unfortunately, during our planned hike, raging thunderstorms and tempestuous weather meant our climb was canceled. But luckily, we quickly came up with a backup plan, a road trip through some of Colorado's most iconic sites and quirkiest hidden gems. Join us as we embark on this goofy, fun-filled adventure through central Colorado. Heavy rain poured down outside as we made last minute plans for our road trip adventure. This is the first time, I think, in the history of Adventure Archives that I have argued to wake up earlier than Tom's. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you liked getting up early. What? Here's to a great road trip. <laughs> you should uh, make it interesting where if someone bad mouths another person or complains. You should do like some sort of feats of strength. <laughs> <laughs> It's like depending on who you insult, you have to do a challenge. Like if you insult Thomas, you have to create an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> After a quick dinner and more planning, we headed to bed. The next day, a hailstorm raged outside, making us feel reassured in our decision to cancel our mountain hike and opt for something easier. We loaded the car up with our bags, but the others were still worn out from the recent hike at Lost Creek. I gotta be honest with you. I think I'm about 60% today. I'm roughly at 60% myself. <laughs> Andrew's gotta be 180. <laughs> I was at 40% earlier, but now that I have these Van Damme pants on, I'm at a 200. <laughs> okay, so first stop, Pike's Peak. We're just gonna drive up there. We're not climbing. There will be no climbing of mountains today. <laughs> we headed out, making our way south. As we drove through Denver, Robbie inquired about our first stop on the road trip. Okay, tell me everything you know about Pikes Peak. I know that it's a 14er. I know that it is one of 54 14ers in Colorado. I deduced that by looking at a framed thing on Thomas's wall. Any supplementary info? America the Beautiful is actually like inspired by this mountain. You know, the Purple Mountain's majesty. That's, that's this mountain. Purple Mountain's majesty, that's in the song. America. <laughs> We still had a two and a half hour drive ahead of us, and a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie we had recently watched was fresh on our minds. Okay, so we're starring in an action movie. What would our action movie <laughs> name be? Thomas is Tommy D now, because someone put that on his coffee order. <laughs> Who is Rob Van Winkle? <laughs> Isn't he it's like Rip a... Van Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, like, what is your name? Jean-Claude Van Damme drew. <laughs> That's all I know. I, he does something like that. We had passed through downtown Denver, and we're now driving through beautiful rural Colorado land. And although we were only a half hour into the drive, the others were already getting a little stir crazy. Excuse me. Do you have a mint? Perhaps some um, monaca. <laughs> Along the way, we took a break for gas, but the shenanigans continued. Thomas kind of looks like Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat, which means that we are both looking like Jean-Claude Van Damme right now. Oh, you should put on those sunglasses. <laughs> what a riveting episode so far. <laughs> As we made our way further south, we started seeing rocky mesas jutting up from the horizon. And in the distance, we saw Pike's Peak rising above the blue hills. As we got closer, Thomas pointed out some other interesting landmarks. You see that mountain over there, the one that kind of tapers off with all those uh, towers on top? That's Cheyenne Mountain. If you've ever watched the TV show Stargate, the Stargate's supposed to be located in there. Oh, that's awesome. It's also where Space Force is headquartered. So in front of us there, you can actually see what's called the Manitou Incline. It's part of an old like cogway or railway, I forget, that's been converted into a hiking trail. And over the 
course of a mile, you go 2,000 vertical feet up. There's actually people that will try and do it over a thousand times uh, in a year. It's kind of a competition. Uh, you know, that would feel really grueling while you were doing it, but once you were done, I bet you would feel really great. <laughs> are you gonna go up and come back down? Yeah, but going there's another side trail that goes behind the mountain that people take down, so that usually is just one way. You wanna do it? It's like sometime? Like right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> and along with snow-capped mountains, we saw the distinctive red rocks that are characteristic of this region of Colorado. We now pass through a small neighborhood on our way to the road that wound up to the top of Pikes Peak. So it's 19 miles up, but 49 minutes. Is that right? Yep. Got to break out some boredom meeting. <laughs> I was just thinking that too. <laughs> Perhaps a pattern of time that wake up the senses. Oh yeah. That sounds kind of refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Any banana chips? <laughs> Howdy. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Perfect. Thank you. All right, guys. You ready to go up America's Mountain? So last time you tried to do this, you didn't make it? We couldn't. Yeah, the road was closed, they said. After like 15 miles. What happens like, if it closes when you're at the top? Ah, uh, you die. <laughs> <laughs> I just do my breathing exercises. <laughs> There's a lot of similarities between this and Mount Washington on uh, the east side in New Hampshire. For one, there's a road that goes all the way to the top. Two, both mountains are the only places in the U.S. that have a cogway that take you to the summit. I think I heard that a train gradient can be at most two or three percent, whereas a cogway can go much more vertical because it's got that got those cogs to hold you in place. The road now led us deeper into the foothills of the 14er. We were still fairly low in altitude, surrounded by conifer trees, but the winding roads were already affecting Robbie. I'm garsick. <laughs> Are you actually? A little bit. Yeah, I, I would give that. The road now ascended rapidly, and we noticed the trees start to thin out. Also, it's getting really chilly right now. We're about 55 degrees. We were well above the trees now, and the sight of the steep hills just off the road was a bit unnerving. How clenched is your butt right now? Oh, it's puckered. <laughs> this is your butt look toned like the actual Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You feel that clench that will help you work the glutes. <laughs> the winding road led higher, and now we saw patches of snow sprawled across the Rocky Mountain slopes, along with incredible views of the surrounding landscape. Up here, the atmosphere was notably thinner as well. well. Thomas pointed out that he was feeling lightheaded, and as soon as he said that, I was like, you know, I think I am a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whenever I actually like hike a 14er, I always feel it. I, I wish I didn't, but I'm definitely, uh, you definitely feel a 14er. Oh, yeah. Every time I go up a mountain like this, I have this feeling that it's not going to be as epic because you didn't work for it. But when you get up here, you're like, wow, no, I didn't need to work for it. The views are still quite nice. <laughs> as we explored around, we saw one of the iconic cogways making its way to the top. Whoa, whoa. Oh. And for how a cogway differs from a train, we inspected the tracks to get a better idea. So you can see how the rail has this metal cog part in the middle where the gears will just pull it up. It's that really, really cool. cool. Yeah. This is the original Summit House constructed in 1873. I mean, look at this. People climbed up here and just hung out. I love ruins like this. Not far from the ruins, we saw a portly marmot waddling around. <laughs> What's he doing? He's like, oh, you guys got some food? What? I don't think it's safe down there, is it? <laughs> okay, so Andrew will now be doing jumping jacks at 14,000 feet. <laughs> What's the purpose behind this? Uh, just to test. Test your mic? The altitude. Also, I feel like I need to earn, like you guys did a big hike before, but I did not. <laughs> I'm already kind of winded. <laughs> One, two, three, four, 20, 30. Let's go for 100, 40, 50. 60. Well, that's, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. impressed. 80, 90, 100. Whew. 
How do you feel? Not bad. I feel like my calves are burning more than anything. <laughs> I am very dizzy now. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. I'm pretty impressed. Thank you, thank you. It's you the pants. For it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the action junk <laughs> After that, I walked my JCVD action trousers into the nearby visitor center to check out the museum with the others. So about a month ago, my dad and I wanted to get to the summit, but we couldn't because it was snowed off. And it was about May 11th. There it is. So that's what happened. We wanted to make it to the summit, but they said it closed. And it's interesting because if you go back a couple days, that's what it looked like. It just shows you how volatile the weather is up here. Someone ran a marathon up here and it cha started as a challenge to see if a non-smoker could beat a smoker up to the peak and back, which was clearly true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all know Lewis and Clark, but in the southwestern region, uh, Zebulon Pike was uh, commissioned to kind of go explore this area. He never actually summited with his crew, but that's why they call it Pike's Peak, is after Zebulon Pike. As a uh, space alien, Zebulon had <laughs> plenty of experience navigating <laughs> through mountains. <laughs> Although most Americans today know it as Pike's Peak, the mountain had many names to indigenous Americans. To the Ute, it was called Tava Ka'avi. To the Pawnee, Dus Pei. And to the Apache, Yataya Itzi. We now headed back outside to take another look at the view. Look at how much uh, cloud coverage there is now. Whoa. Misty clouds grazed the stony ground around us, creating a surreal experience. Made all the more surreal by the fact that we had driven up here in so little time. You know, to somebody who lived in the past, what we're doing now is probably the equivalent of somebody doing this in the future, like on Mars. Yeah. yeah. You know, just like taking a space shuttle to Mars and then just hanging out. I don't know if you guys saw, but back in my place, I've got framed tickets that my grandma and my granddad purchased when they went up to Pikes Peak in the 50s. Whoa. It cost 50 cents to get to the top here. Sorry, one sec. Is that Colorado Springs that we can see out there? That's yeah. really cool. Oh, wow. Okay, there's one more thing we gotta do before we go. Apparently, they make donuts on top of the mountain. So we gotta go try those for science. <laughs> <laughs> we should get one and bring it down and just see if it deflates. <laughs> I think that's what that smell is. It smells like a fish fry to me. <laughs> we headed into the cafe and bought a selection of four different donuts. <laughs> Might need to do like a thousand more jumping jacks to earn this. <laughs> <laughs> We passed by a little statue of Bigfoot, then headed back outside, where the clouds danced all around us. Wow. Amid the imposing swirling mist, we enjoyed our donuts. All right, Dink, to Pikes Peak Donuts. I feel like I'm part of a club now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a good donut. Hard to mess a donut up, though. <laughs> this one tastes of poop, or should we say this one tastes of donut. <laughs> this one takes the cake. Or oh. should I say, this one takes the donut. Mm. It's great when you have to explain a joke twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as fresh as I had hoped. I thought they made them up on the mountain. It was, it was warm until we walked through the cold air. <laughs> really, these are just normal donuts. <laughs> but the setting, unbeatable. <laughs> I mean, look at this view. <laughs> 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 Robbie's going Unabomber mode. <laughs> With our bellies full of donuts, we made our way back to the car, then started down the mountain. Wow, that's terrible visibility. Put this baby in first gear and just cruising on down. If it was treacherous before, it's very treacherous now. <laughs> Can't even see the part where the road ends and the creening off the cliff it begins. It's, see, it's not all, you know, it's not all easy, come on. <laughs> At least not for Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> oh, 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 look, there's a cloud, there's the breaking. Oh, oh yeah. That just went away immediately. Hey, what are we doing, buddy? Uh, same guy. <coughs> you, you can't just stop in the middle of the street, my guy. We passed by a lone marmot, then came to a mandatory break checkpoint. You're good, thank you, folks. 
Thank you. Thank you. What was that? Is it checking the temperature? Must have been, yeah. Snowy rocks gave way to red hills, which transitioned to coniferous forests as we made our way back down. Okay, so Pikes Peak, worth it? I think so. What do you think? Donuts, not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Those donuts were like $7 for two donuts. Yeah, yeah. Next up, we're gonna try and do Garden of the Gods. It's raining a little bit right now, so we'll see what we can do. My mountain weather changes so fast. Yeah, that is crazy. This definitely looks more and more like we made the right decision not to do long speak. Yeah. Yeah, 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 gotta justify it. <laughs> Whoa. Our decision felt all the more justified as we witnessed lightning strike not too far off from where we were. Thomas is an unflappable driver. <laughs> That's true. It's like any situation, he's just happy to driving. There are some circumstances where I'm not happy. He's, he's unhappy, but he won't give up is what <laughs> I think. <laughs> we drove through the scattered rainstorms taking in the view of distant verdant hills as we made our way to Garden of the Gods near Colorado Springs. Before long, we had made it, and we were immediately greeted with views of unique and intricate rock formations, whose auburn hues complemented the rich, rain-soaked greenery. I had been here before, so I would wait in the car while the others took in the sights. Okay, we'll see you in a minute, Thomas. Yes. And with the weather and the thunder, it feels like the gods are tending to their garden right now. <laughs> what a weird change in scenery all of a sudden. That's the best part about road oh. trips. Oh, dear. Wow, we just came down from a 14,000 foot mountain. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some rock pigeons up in those rocks. And it's so funny having come from New York and you're so used to seeing them in the city, but it's like, this is the actual habitat of a, of a pigeon. Wow, this is awesome. This is so cool. There's uh, some bird nests in that hole right there. Dude, you can just see the bits of light shining through on these rocks here. The gentle rainfall combined with the delicate evening light definitely gave this majestic rocky landscape a mysterious feeling. It's no wonder why this place came to be known as the Garden of the Gods, or why the Utes consider it as the original site of their people's creation. Okay, we parked right here, right here, so let's go through this little gateway here because it's super cool, and we'll come back and circle around. It feels kind of like we're entering a forbidden area because the weather's ramping up. There's like sleet hitting our face as we're walking. weather is actually perfect in a way. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling very lethargic before. Yeah, yeah. I feel very alive right That's now. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Nothing like some cold rain to wake you up. <laughs> actually, this is way more fun than the last time I was here. <laughs> As the rain fell, it seeped between the red, rocky soil beneath our feet. Seeing the water coalescing together in this fertile land beneath the towering spires of stone, it was hard not to feel that there was something divine or spiritual about this place. So these incredible structures are made of what's called lion sandstone. You can really easily tell it's sandstone as opposed to the granite you see in the mountains in Colorado. And apparently this stone has been around for about 300 to 260 million years ago. It's cool how it's just like a, like a gate to the garden, basically. Okay. Well, shall we? Beautiful, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. It has occurred to me that getting wet right at the beginning of a road trip <laughs> maybe isn't the best idea. Yeah, because we're not hoteling it or anything, so. <laughs> it's also just occurred to me that running or moving faster in the rain makes it worse. 
<laughs> All I know is the Van Damme pants are getting wet. <laughs> Pants are see-through now. <laughs> so, we found the downside of the Van Damme pants. <laughs> so, did you kids have fun? Yeah, that was. It was awesome. It was super fun, actually. <laughs> Who's ready for some food and friends? Oh man, can't wait to eat tacos. <laughs> up next on the docket, we headed into Colorado Springs to meet up with Kevin Fetty and his wife Justine for some dinner. Just a few months before this trip, I had tagged along with Kevin on a winter hike up Quandary Peak one of Colorado's 14ers. We parked in a nearby garage in Colorado Springs' trendy downtown area. After taking in the view of the town, we headed down to the streets to explore. This is the bus station. We could make one person have to take the bus home instead of riding home. <laughs> it's like we get on each other's nerves. It's like, get on the bus station! <laughs> Beautiful blue hills surrounded the city's downtown, which felt both historic and hip at the same time, combining a small town feel with modern amenities. We arrived at the restaurant we were meeting at, and before long, saw our friends walking towards us. Hi, Robin. I feel like I know you guys, and you have no idea who I am. I am a wood burning pyrographer, and I was watching one of you guys' videos, and there was a scene that made me laugh for 10 minutes straight. And so I made this from that. Oh, after Andrew was done rationing why his food tasted bad. That's the line. That is so perfect. Awesome. Oh my god, yes. This is awesome. Now, we headed inside and ordered some food. But to start, we had some refreshing beers. This is a Pacifico, which is... Pacifico is from Mexico. It's good, it's light and crisp. All right, so I've got a Goat Patch Brewing Hazy IPA. Goat Patch is from Colorado Springs. So just a little bit north of here. And it's great, it's refreshing. Hey, two Thomas. I got a rock. Also local. Oh, is it really? It's from uh, Golden. Oh. Eventually, our fancy tacos arrived at the table. Cheers. This is the pickled pig, pork pork and some pickles and stuff. Oh, that's super good. Okay, so I got barbacoa, carne asada, and sriracha chicken. And this looks the most interesting, so I'll start with this. That's good. Take it. Take it. Nice stuff. Dinner was delicious. After imbibing in our drinks and sharing some laughs, we headed out of the restaurant and parted ways. See you guys. Bye. And if you get a chance, definitely check out Kevin's videos. There's a great video where uh, he takes me up a mountain and I look like an idiot. Far from cool here. We made our way out of Colorado Springs and we're now headed to a campground near Canyon City. And as we drove, the evening light mixed with the tempestuous weather, creating something magical. So far, the drive had treated us to gorgeous landscapes, misty clouds, and even a rainbow. But as the sun set, it turns out the best views were just around the corner.
incredible sunsets ever. We all just kind of sat in silence <laughs> and just looked. It's like a, a scene out of a dream. Remember that dream where you ate banana chips? <laughs> <laughs> in my dream, it was popcorners. <laughs> It's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> in the cabin tonight? Come on, man. I forgot we were in a cabin. And I was like, ah, oh, we gotta get into some tents. And then I remembered and I got so much more excited. That'd be so good. We now drove through Canyon City, where we passed by a strange historic landmark. Is that a prison? Yeah. That's one of the oldest prisons in Colorado. And in fact, when it was made in the 1800s, the workers had to make it themselves. They had to make their own cells. Still in use today. The golden evening light started fading away as dusk fell, but the sunset's last rays still cast the clouds in its brilliant orange glow. We were rushing to make it to Royal Gorge to catch a glimpse of its impressive canyons in the last evening's light. As we drove, a lightning storm raged all around us. We were getting closer, but the skies around us were getting darker. Luckily, in the distance, there was still the smallest glimmer of sunlight peeking through the clouds. Ooh, picnic area and overlook. Poor Thomas. We'll see, don't thank me yet. There's a lot of lightning up ahead. <laughs> First spot I see, I'm, I'm jumping out. We're taking this. All right, let's go. Follow me. Follow you? Yep. Okay. Whoa! Oh! Woo! Holy crap! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Andrew! This way! Man, see the river down there? Holy cow. Whoa, okay. Is this real life right now? <laughs> wow! I don't know how much how long we want to stay out here with the lightning coming in. Yeah. What do you guys think? This oh my god. Totally worth it. <laughs> this is so surreal right now. I don't even feel like I'm actually awake right now. <laughs> Feels like we're in a painting, right? Like some old 1800s romantic yeah. dark painting. Where the painting's kind of faded, but you see those highlights on the cliffs. Oh, oh wow. It looks like a Hudson Valley painting or something. Yeah. Hudson Valley, that's exactly what I was thinking of, yeah. This is the closest I've ever seen like a Bierstadt painting in real life. We booked it over here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I felt like I was hunting a gazelle or something. <laughs> Did you guys see the suspension bridge over there? Yeah. Apparently that's the one of the highest suspension bridges in the U.S., I think. It's about oh, a man, thousand. That is terrifying. It's about a little over a thousand oh. feet down there. Everything is clenching and tingling. <laughs> Cliffs are just so beautiful right now. I was totally doubting that there would be light cast through here, but yeah. holy cow. There's a big storm behind us, but there's clear skies ahead. Much like life. <laughs> in case it wasn't clear in the madness that just ensued, we parked somewhere up this road. That's Is that us? Yep. All right. Well, this uh, was quite an adventure, <laughs> if I don't say so myself. After that exciting jaunt to the canyon, it was time to relax in a cabin at a nearby KOA campground. And the entrance of the campsite reminded us of our road trip through the Southwest back in 2018. It's like it's a save point in a video game that just looks familiar. <laughs> we checked ourselves in at the kiosk. All around us, the night had become quiet and calm. After that, we made our way to the cabin, but the door appeared to have been locked. Sort of. Maybe they emailed me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> How'd that work just now? There's, a, there's like a little. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. That's what we were doing. Cool. It's like a Zelda puzzle. <laughs> yeah. 
close the door. <laughs> we go by age. Does the oldest person get the biggest bed? Me and, me and Thomas will be bunking it. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with it. I love a cabin. I love a good cabin. Come on, man. This is bigger than. This is nicer than I thought. Ooh. Oh, there is electric too. We got electric. Nice. Now, we grabbed our gear and got settled in. <laughs> so, I don't know if you guys believe in parallel universes, but in some parallel universe, the three of us are soaking on the side of a mountain <laughs> that we wouldn't be able to summit because of thunderstorm. I'm very glad we're in this universe. Oh man, especially after all the rain and the running through the dark, this is a welcome, welcome sight. Oh man. I, th I thought we were not going to earn this, but it feels earned now. <laughs> we splurged for the cabin, but... Totally worth it. Totally worth it. Such we can still set up a tent in here if we want. <laughs> this is bigger than I thought. Honestly, I thought it was going to be like this, yeah. and then a wall, and then maybe like a spot for another. It's actually very nice. This is, oh yeah, it's Seltzer? Seltzer? I also, I want to shout out to Sifu Seth, because I, I just learned this flashlight self-defense course, and just like obsessively bought a flashlight, and it came in real good mm -hmm. handy. Not to defend ourselves from anything, but... Defended us against the darkness. Yes. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are my feet dry in this beautiful cabin, but now we got some <laughs> nondescript blue fruit snacks. <laughs> are there fruit snacks? <laughs> Pop out and open your mouth. I actually... I don't want to Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did that land? Okay, good. <laughs> fruit snacks are closing. Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> With most of the shenanigans out of our system and the night winding down, it was time to get some nice footage of us going to bed. <laughs> okay, don't do that either. <laughs> Andrew, please don't kill me tonight. <laughs> me and Thomas are like the lackeys with Van Damme going to the blood sports room. <laughs> and we're like... <laughs> The night before, having like the jitters. How, how tough do you think the guys are going to be at the tournament? <laughs> okay, well, you're obviously John Claude Van Damme. <laughs> oh, Ray Jackson. <laughs> you're, you're Rob Jackson. <laughs> Rob Jackson. <laughs> Brian could be Victor Lynn. <laughs> oh, Thomas is Rollins. Thomas is Forrest Whitaker chasing Van Damme through the, through the city. <laughs> I'm a young Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> like a way, like an uncomfortably young Forrest Whitaker. Like, ooh. <laughs> Although the night was quiet and calm, all of us together in a cabin meant it would take a little longer before we fell asleep. Good, Thomas is, Thomas is like, like a little squirrel in the corner like this. <laughs> I just hear music like this, accordion music coming from there. And he goes, well, that's really clever. <laughs> Don't look at me. You can't sleep in these van pants. <laughs> Rob Pants Winkle. <laughs> we did eventually fall asleep, and the next day, we awoke to a beautiful, serene, and sunny morning. I had stepped out a bit to enjoy the sun's warmth. Back inside the cabin, the others were just getting up. How'd you sleep? I do not recommend drinking an entire can of sparkling water before going to sleep. <laughs> All night, I was like, I should probably get up. I should probably get up. And then when I finally did it, 5.30, I was at the bathroom for like three minutes, just standing at the urinal waiting. <laughs> we started packing away our gear and loading up the car. As we stepped in and out of the cabin, we stopped to take in the scenery around us. Before heading out, Thomas had some treats he had bought for breakfast that he wanted to show us. All right, Robbie, when I was at the grocery store prepping for this trip, I let the intrusive thoughts win. Do you like Reese's Puffs or Chex Mix birthday cake? I'll take a Reese's, thank you. Wow. Is this coffee? It is. Is it just cold? Kind of, yeah. Can I have a drink? 
Yeah, sure. It's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> KOA, thumbs up. Oh, fantastic. Thumbs up. I almost never think it's gonna be as good as it always is. Being into backpacking and stuff can make you turn your nose up at KOAs, but it's a great place to just stop and stay, especially on a road trip. Now, we headed to our next destination, Great Sand Dunes National Park. As we drove along, the boredom eating started earlier than usual. Do you have one there? No. Do you want half? Sure. <laughs> it really is the cereal. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew had been to the Great Sand Dunes years ago, so Robbie decided to ask him about it. Well, one of the unique features is that there's some dunes right in front of a mountain range, which is really incredible and kind of unusual. The dunes, you're actually allowed to just wander anywhere on them, so there's no set path. So we can just walk wherever we want, and we can also rent sandboards to go sliding down the dunes. there, we stopped by a colorful looking coffee shop that was posted up by the road. Inside were all sorts of trinkets, souvenirs, and shelves full of coffee. <laughs> we ordered our drinks and explored while Andrew recalled his last time here. It's pretty cool. So I came here eight years ago on the Find Your Park expedition oh trip. And I had no idea where this place was or what it was called. I just remembered the exterior because it's super distinct. Yeah. And then you were like, oh, I got to use the bathroom. We just happened to pull in. That here. is really that weird is so how cool. stuff like that works out. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty cool place. The Mirage Trading Post opened in 2005, but the building in which it was housed was built shortly after World War II. It's like a reading nook back here. Yeah. Every nook and cranny was filled with more trinkets and interesting souvenirs. I'd wear that. <laughs> <laughs> After exploring a bit, it was time to try our drinks. So what'd you get? I got yerba mate. All right, I'll try that first. It's hot. Oh, yeah. It's very mild. Oh, man, the iced coffee is not mild. That's <laughs> strong. So yerba mate is a drink, I believe, from South America, but usually it's drinking out of a traditional cup that has a little metal straw coming out of it. Mm. I've always been intrigued by it, but... Mm, that's good, though. We decided to sit outside a bit and enjoy the calm morning. You guys can pick me up on the way back. I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> this is the height of relaxation right now. This is really incredible. It's kind of hot, I gotta go Van Damme mode. <laughs> Probably it's gone. like, we just keep taking off clothes. That's <laughs> all we're not wearing anything. It was such a beautiful day, and we were tempted to just keep sitting around for hours. But eventually, we made our way to the car. It was onward to our destination, and in the distance, we could just make out the giant dunes against a backdrop of the impressive Sangre de Cristo mountain range. All around us was a truly awe-inspiring landscape, and the uniqueness of the dunes became even clearer as we got closer to them. So how many hours has this sand dune been visible? And we've just been driving straight towards it the entire time. Do you remember it taking this long? I mean, this feels about right to me, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
just so deceptively far. Yeah, I, I definitely see remember it. seeing it from really far away. It's so weird how there's just the sudden dunes out of that is, yeah, middle and really weird. Why are they there? Yeah, geology. <laughs> <laughs> We're stopping by this place called Oasis. It has food and stuff, but mostly we're trying to get some uh, sandboards so we can slide on the sand. <laughs> we arrived at Oasis, where some workers told us how to use the boards. So when you're applying your wax, you're going to use the edge of your wax. You stand it up on this edge and push down hard. It's just a zigzag pattern. It's not coated solid. So now we're going to the sand dunes, and you can just wander wherever you want on the dunes. Find a nice hill, slide down it a few times. <laughs> Get that mild adrenaline rush going. <laughs> we now officially enter the park. Thank you. On our way in, we notice many cars parked a good distance from the dunes. Okay, uh, Thomas is going to drop us off. We're going to scramble out as fast as possible, and then he's going to park out in the boondocks and then meet us on the hill. This seems like a theme. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to drop you guys off right here. We made our way to the dunes via a flat stretch of wet sand. It's wow. interesting. There's actually a good amount of water here. It must have been really wet this season because last time I was here was all just dry sand from what I remember. Was it this flat area before the dunes? Yeah, I do remember that actually. As we made our way across the surprisingly slick, sandy flats, we bumped into a viewer of the channel. So this is Gareth with uh, Nice Kayaks. It's nice to meet you guys. I just watch your channel all the time and it's really good stuff and hope you guys have a good time sandboarding on the sand dunes here. <laughs> and you have a kayak business based out of Golden? Golden Colorado inflatable kayaks for whitewater and multi-day uh, just river trips. Oh, check it out. Okay, cool. Yeah, awesome. I well, I'll take awesome. more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice right. meeting you guys. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very much anticipating this being more fun to watch than it is to do. <laughs> But we'll see. <laughs> Are you down to run? Come on, you're a you're, you're kung fu oh boy. God. This is way easier than doing jumping jacks at 14,000 feet, right? I don't know. <laughs> it's hotter though. I got water. <laughs> I have another idea. I'll sit on the sled. You just pull me. <laughs> Whew, that was working. Oh, yeah. Okay. We need the wax. This sort of thing. Right, that, looks, that looks really steep. <laughs> All right, bon voyage. Woo! Uh, <laughs> Let me do belly first or something. Okay. Oh. I look good. That's pretty fun. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> I hope this is fun to watch. <laughs> You get winded so fast. Why is it so hard? <laughs> oh, no. No. Thomas eventually right. made it back from parking and joined us on the sandy slopes. How far did we drive for this? How? I think I did it wrong. I think I gotta lean back. We're gonna work our way up to one of the bigger hills. Cause if we're gonna expend all this energy, we gotta make it worthwhile. <laughs> so we're gonna go to Big Bertha after one more. <laughs> this hill right here looks quite promising. It's a couple of streaks at the front here. I'm gonna go for broken. I'm gonna go for the two big ones in the distance. Ooh, wow. I mean, Godspeed. this is, it's gonna be a one-time event. So I better make it worthwhile. <laughs> make sure you wax it up real good. Oh, yeah. Why is the sand so hard to walk in? Just instant, instant fatigue. This is miserable. <laughs> it's all gonna be worthwhile once we get to the top of that hill. Okay, that's an accurate hill. I'm noticing there's a bump right there. We might get a little bit airborne, so just be prepared for that. <laughs> Yo, 
okay? Probably gonna go get the car to park so far away. Uh, you guys got the sand, uh, sand sleds and everything? Yeah, I'll, we'll get them, yeah. Okay. While I left to get the car, the others decided to do a few more slides <laughs> down the big hill. False start. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you okay? <laughs> <laughs> not worth it unless you want to work out of a lifetime in an ear full of sand <laughs> how come we keep flipping it's hard to keep it straight uh. <laughs> that is the look of dejection right there no oh my <laughs> you just grew a beard from all the sand that's on your face <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it went so far down my left ear, it hey, hit my eardrums. Turn this way, turn this way. <laughs> Instant shave. <laughs> oh, uh. Do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> you can skip this. <laughs> oh my god. I've never eaten that much sand in my life, dude. When you hit the ground, the sand just, it's just, it's like water flowing into every orifice. Oh, all right. Okay. I'm gonna do one yeah. sacrifice and then. Andrew is going all the way up. I'll see him in 20 minutes. <laughs> still going. That takes so long to get up there. You know, honestly, you could probably go from there and it'll still be pretty good. Oh. 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 Hold on. Keep going, keep going. This is, I'm gonna Superman it for the last part. Okay. Woo! Oh, that's way better. <laughs> that is the uh, most exhilarating, not fun that I've ever had. <laughs> Godspeed. Hey, pretty good. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, you should do it that way. The sand was incredibly draining to walk through, let alone climb up. And the sledding just wasn't quite adrenaline pumping enough to be worth the exhaustion. We made our way back to the car. That was absolutely not thrilling. <laughs> Actually, the Superman one was fun. I, I should have just done that on the big hill too. Do you remember that Calvin and Hobbes where he's waiting for the propeller hat to come in the mail? Oh, yeah. and he's so excited and he's so excited. He finally gets the hat. <laughs> you got sand all over your face. No, you gotta, you gotta go underneath the water fountain there. <laughs> nice cold beverage. Uh, <laughs> now this is fun. <laughs> Dink. After enjoying some refreshing beverages, we shook the sand out of all of our shoes, pockets, and other crevices. Months after this, and several washes later, my socks were still encrusted with sand from this trip. I feel like Eric Andre after he finishes destroying the set. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, that climb up the dunes also made the uh, 100 jumping jacks on the mountain look like child's play. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys deserve a nap. We're gonna just drive and see where the road takes us now. If you do decide to come out here and do it, I really highly recommend doing the Superman version because you just flow so much better that way. But uh, if you injure yourself that way, don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> we said goodbye to the great sand dunes. After all the tiring, trudging through sand, we had food on our mind. It's, is it time to go eat lunch? <laughs> you know what we should have? A succulent Chinese <laughs> meal? <laughs> <laughs> now, we headed west. 
Our next stop was a small mountain town called Creed. As we drove further west, we saw more hills and cliffs rising up on either side of the road. Finally, we arrived at Creed, which had a population of about 260 people and sat at an elevation of nearly 9,000 feet. Quaint buildings surrounded the main street that ran through the town, and beautiful flowers bloomed from planters nearby, like this shrubby sink foil and these flowering alliums in the onion family. As we explored, Andrew spotted some more interesting plants along the street. Over in this grove here, they've got a bunch of the cottonwood trees. That's what the big ones without the white bark are. The white ones are the aspens, but we keep seeing little fluffy things flying through the air and from these western cottonwoods. Oh, this is cool. This is like right in the little valley here. We took in all the interesting sights, keeping our eyes peeled for a nice restaurant that was open. But sometimes our eyes got more than we bargained for. We meandered about without too much aim or purpose. I love this kind of lazy feel. Yeah. You can just kind of ramble. It's not too hot. Sit next to this big moose. Eventually, though, we did find a place to eat. A nice little pizza spot with a rustic interior and, of course, cold draft beer. Yeah, yeah. Now, it was time to enjoy our refreshing beverages. It feels very undeserved today. It's good. I earned it today. I'm going to try it. I went up that sand dune like three times. You did. This is the chili guava cider, and it's spelled like Chile the country, but the bartender said it might actually be like the uh, chili pepper. Ooh, yeah. It's got like a hint of guava, especially in the aftertaste, but it does have a bit of that hot pepper bite at the beginning. For our appetizer, we had a simple caprese salad. This is the type of thing that I would never order myself, but I'm never sad when I eat it. Actual vegetables is really nice. It's four ingredients. The freshness, the coldness, the slight sweetness of the vinegar, super good. We were already thoroughly enjoying our appetizers and aperitifs. And then out came the main course, a hearty pizza. I love green peppers on pizza, man. Instantly takes me back to your parents' house, having pizza. Love it. <laughs> it's the spot right on the mark. The pizza was delicious, but I realized it could have been made even better. Well, let's get some of these on it. Come on, son. Dude, this is so good. I didn't realize how hungry I was. No. We also haven't had like a real meal yet. You know? It's 3.30 right now. I hope we got dinkers. <laughs> Veggies on pizza, man. Everything but broccoli, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> After a satisfying meal, it was back out to the streets of Creed. It was hard not to pause and admire the surrounding cliffs and hills. We had had an enjoyable late lunch in Creed, but we still had more ahead on our agenda. Oh, they tie, they tie. Ice cream, ice cream. <laughs> we all scream. So we're in Creed and now we're headed to... Long's Peak. No. <laughs> Uh, Lake, City. Lake City. Lake City. Not Salt Lake City, just Lake City. Um, Thomas, are you sick of driving yet? How's it going? I am not sick of driving yet. Um, I'm sick of my passengers. Just kidding. Don't blame me. Got some great passengers right here. Are you kidding me? Who could ask for anything better? Don't ever touch me again. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing back there? How's the back seat? Oh, I'm great. I've, I've got this sort of barrier between me and the rest of you. <laughs> How's your socks doing? I, I've lost my sense of smell, so I can't tell. There is a uh, borderline Geneva Convention violation in the back seat <laughs> with some chemical weapons that are at Andrew's socks. They don't really smell. Uh, yeah, they, they definitely do really smell, though. Well, sucks for you guys. <laughs> we now pass through wider, more open meadows and rolling hills, all of which were surrounded by an impressive display of mountains in the distance. Herds of cattle grazed in sunny, verdant fields of grass that grew lush along a placid stream. After about an hour's drive, we pulled into Lake City.
We parked and got out of the car and noticed cottonwood seeds floating daintily through the air. Now we made our way to the San Juan Soda Company, which Kevin had suggested to us to buy some ice cream. Inside were all sorts of gifts and trinkets. After we bought our ice cream, we headed back outside to enjoy the spoils. So welcome to uh, Lake City here. This is beautiful. This is truly nestled like in the mountains. This isn't like a hill town, this is a mountain town. Dude, the cottonwood seeds are really pretty. Did you see those planters up there with the pants? <laughs> What's the city from Back to the Future called? This looks like the town square. Did you steal this spoon? No, they said I could take it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna keep it. <laughs> Oh, come on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Lake City is kind of infamously known for Alfred Packer, who was known as a Colorado cannibal. He, uh, in the winter of 1874, took five men up into the mountains on an expedition for gold and later said that they abandoned him and then confessed later to actually murdering and eating them all to survive. It's certainly an interesting history here, but right now, it's beautiful. You see people in the park having a good time and, you know, a lot of great uh, ice cream shops. Actually, just one ice cream shop, but very happy. How was that? <laughs> I'm going to play the piano. <laughs> I'm going to film you playing the piano. <clears throat> about two and a half hours to the campsite, but an hour or so to uh, our next stop. We made our way out of the quaint and quirky town and now headed north. It was another hour stretch of driving, and although the scenery around us was beautiful, Robbie's tendency to get antsy on road trips was starting to come out. <laughs> what if we did a road trip with just the three of us, but we still got two cars? <laughs> <laughs> Got a road trip where I had to drive both cars. <laughs> <laughs> go like 50 feet, go back, drive another 50 feet. Get the other car, drive another 50 feet. We do a road trip with two cars. Thomas is driving by himself and he just drives off. <laughs> He's like, are you well, guys ready? Are you? <laughs> we do a road trip with two cars and Thomas drives both cars. It's like a bicycle and he's got one hand out. <laughs> even, even better, it's a uh, John Claude. <laughs> on doffing it with both like split splitting it and <laughs> one foot steers one wheel the other foot steers the other wheel hey, i've always wished that you could have cars that could connect together oh man how great that would be god that would be so great just like legos <laughs> <laughs> Doing all right there. <laughs> we got to ask the question now. We're coming up on uh, we're about nine hours into today. Would you rather be on the side of Long's Peak right now in a thunderstorm, or be trapped in this car? That car. Yeah, probably car. I got a milkshake on. <laughs> <laughs> I have no right to complain, <laughs> and yet I will. <laughs> As the afternoon sun sank lower, a change of scenery perked us up. The vast blue waters of the Blue Mesa Reservoir, which was part of the Gunnison River, sparkled beautifully in the evening light. The vividness of the scenery in particular stood out as we drove along the water's edge. And the color of the water in that reservoir is so vibrant. Like I love how vibrant the blue is compared to the green next to it. We were also just talking about how diverse this landscape is in Colorado. Like, we went through the desert with the sand dunes. And now we've just got these huge meadows full of sagebrush. Nothing is exactly close, but it's also not too far either, right? Yeah. I mean, this is something uh, you could definitely do on a weekend. In fact, we're doing it on a weekend too. Not even a long weekend. But the environment changes so Like, just yesterday, we were at the top of a snow-capped mountain, and then we also saw these crazy red sandstone rocks, and now we're in this landscape. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Before crossing over Lake City Bridge, we decided to pull off at an overlook to enjoy the scenery in person. Yeah. 
The view from here was stunning, and the water seemed particularly high today. Who knew such amazing sights could be found along a random bridge in the middle of Colorado? I feel like every road trip needs a surprise. And I feel like this is a surprise for us here. I was not expecting this big of a lake in the middle of the mountains. <laughs> Why is the water so blue? <laughs> <laughs> it's really blue. I, I don't know. Because it's really fresh. It's from the snow. The blue sky is above us. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how vast this reservoir is. I think we were commenting on that as we drove in. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why is the water blue? <laughs> Places like this are some of my favorite spots on the road trip though. Like the surprise that you mentioned. Like, not a big surprise, but just random spots along the road where you, know, you stop at a windy rest stop, kind of don't know what you're doing. <laughs> You've been in the car so long and suddenly you get to breathe the fresh air. Yep. That's when you really feel like you're traveling. Yeah. As someone who moved to Colorado about a year ago, the most challenging thing for me was just feeling comfortable enough to get out of my comfort zone and just pick a direction and travel. Yeah. Venturing into that unknown is what's scary to a lot of people, including myself. Disorienting moments like this are kind of fun though because it keeps you on your toes and it, it makes you actually experience life with yeah. the, the wonder of a child, you know? Especially when you're in the car, it's easy to go on autopilot when you're not driving especially. But then you come out to places like this and it's like, oh man, I'm just out here. Yeah. It's so weird. Let's get to the back, back right, canyon. Let's go. Right. We continued on, and the more we drove along the reservoir, the more captivating the scenery became. As we drove, the Gunnison River spilled into a large, yawning chasm, the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. We stopped at various points along our drive to check out a few majestic overlooks of the canyon below. I love a canyon. We drove further along the canyon and eventually arrived at an area called Pioneer Point. Yeah. And it says there's an overlook on either side here. Left or right? Left. The view from here was stunning. Turkey vultures soared through the air all around us as the early evening light illuminated the reddish-orange bluffs. A nearby trail led us down to another overlook of the canyon. My word. So deep in this valley, this is the Gunnison River, and over here, you'll see the spire coming out. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but it might, I think it's pronounced Kirkanti Spire. And between the late 1800s and actually up to 1947, the Denver Rio Grande Railroad used to cut through the bottom of this in some places. This spire is actually featured in their logo. This is super intimidating. Like you don't often come to places in nature that feel like legitimately scary, but this is one of them for yeah. sure. I've been to the Grand Canyon, but I don't remember it that well. But this feels Grand Canyon-esque. I was in the Grand Canyon a couple years ago. It's definitely not as wide as the Grand Canyon, probably not even as deep. But the color and how dark it is and how vegetated it is, it's uh, incredibly unique. You know, all of these vultures circling up ahead, that's also a little bit ominous. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, there's all these swallows or swifts that are flying around in the air and you can tell they're in that family of bird because they have wings that bend backwards and they kind of just fly in this fast erratic pattern it's really cool i bet they're hunting for insects right now we watch from the overlook as the sun set over the canyon walls
eventually, we got back into the car and headed out. But before leaving the Black Canyon, we stopped at one more spectacular overlook of the canyon and its surrounding scenery. From this vantage point, we were afforded a stunning view of distant snow-capped mountains like Coxcomb Peak, Dunsinane Mountain, and Courthouse Mountain, whose jagged peaks and steep faces gave them a particularly unique appearance. After enjoying the view, we had a little meal that definitely did not match the grandeur around us. What is this, a, f- a food sin? <laughs> That's one of Robbie's specialties. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Me. No, I will not allow you to do that. <laughs> it's ham. Let him do it. Let him let do, let it. do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let's see what happens. The dark ones are more ripe. Yeah, I'm just trying. It might go better with that. Oh, uh, it's pepperoni. Oh, okay. That seems... I could reach too far, but I'll do it. <laughs> oh, it's the pepperoni that sends it over there. Well, because ham and pineapple does it. Like I say, it's basically a Hawaiian pizza right there. It's <laughs> good. I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to be like Andrew where I say everything's good. But this is not bad. I don't think you're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me try this. Pepperoni does actually kind of give it like an extra smokiness that works with the pineapple. <laughs> After Andrew was done <laughs> rationing why his food tasted bad. Don't knock it. All right. Until you try it. I guess I have to now. <laughs> Not good. Not good. Very bad. <laughs> but don't you like it? Everything. <laughs> I've done this to myself before. I'm not voluntarily doing that to myself again. <laughs> At least the view was better than the sad pineapple wraps. The sun was now setting, and we saw more interesting sights along our way. Dusk fell as we neared tonight's campsite, a lively apple orchard surrounded by a backdrop of mountains and moonlight. Oh, it's a whole party. Big B's delicious orchard had an entire dance party happening, and we were eager to join in the fun. But first, we had to find out where our campsite was. As it turns out, we were literally camping inside the orchard itself. 014? Yep, it says 14. Awesome. We pulled up between rows of apple trees, then grabbed our camping gear from the trunk. The orchard seemed absolutely peaceful on this moonlit night, but after setting up camp, we were ready to join the rambunctious crowd we had seen on our way in. This, this is, is really so cool. different. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Are we gonna see Thomas get his dance on? I don't know about that. <laughs> we made our way to the main area of the orchard where colorful lights were shining, loud electronic music was playing, and crowds of campers were dancing away. <laughs> this is an orchard. <laughs> this is so awesome. It almost felt like we were in a carnival or a music festival. It wasn't our usual speed, but it was certainly a lot of fun. And to make things better, there was hard apple cider for sale nearby. What'd you get? Also the Orchard original. We drank our ciders, and as the music kicked in, it was time for us to channel the spirit of a dancing Van Damme. First time we partied on an Adventure Archives episode? We definitely danced once before. Okay. I'm 100% sure we've never danced on an Adventure Archives. I would remember that. (laughs) Shall we wander? Yeah, let's wander. Let's go. We walked around the orchard's main building, which was selling cider and pie, and decided to get a refill on our drinks. I got the original. And I got the, I want to say happy apple or something. You can taste like actual apple, I think, but let's try it. The aroma you get in your nose as soon as you drink that is like when you bite into an apple. Oh, it's like yeah, yeah. Mmm, yeah. it's lightly carbonated too. Oh, wow, that's really good, man.
And while we were dancing, someone actually recognized my very specific kung fu inspired dance moves. Oh, yeah. What were the chances that Andrew would run into somebody who was also interested in Kung Fu? Like two out of a hundred? One out of 50, I'd say. Yes, one out of 50. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That looks Good cool. these at night do you know how scared we would be oh my god well, they just look turkey. oh it is what oh okay i was gonna say they look two they look a little abstract which makes it scary but now we headed back to our campsite leaving the raucous crowds and loud music behind us The display of stars and the full moon brought us back to a feeling of serenity. As we hiked back, Thomas tested out his new headlamp. Dude, Thomas's flashlight is like the sun. It is as bright as the moon right now. Check this out. <laughs> oh my god, we're gonna get kicked out of here. <laughs> Meanwhile, my light powered by three AAA batteries <laughs> barely illuminates my face. <laughs> Wait, this light, this light is from 1993. <laughs> we found our way back to our cozy campsite and began setting up our sleeping accommodations. This was a fun night. <laughs> this was a fun night. <laughs> Who would have thought an apple orchard <laughs> would be so bumping? <laughs> yeah, it was like clubbing, dancing. <laughs> Full JCVD mode. <laughs> Andrew Lynn making his acting debut. <laughs> Andrew Lynn plays John Claude. <laughs> <laughs> what a strange day. What a strange trip this has been. <laughs> so strange. <laughs> Get even stranger in the morning. Oh man, I can't wait. Tomorrow's gonna be great. <laughs> okay, I'll see you then. All right, see you then. <laughs> the next morning, a cheerful sunrise cast the orchard in a stunning golden glow. Eventually, we all awoke and started quietly breaking camp. After that, we got in the car and made our way towards the entrance of the orchard. What had been an exuberant party grounds was now a quiet, bucolic scene. Isn't it weird being out here and there's no music and no people? I love the quiet of a morning after a debaucherous night. <laughs> We explored around a bit, then headed back on the road, where we stopped to fuel up and clean the windshield. Look at this extra long handle for maximum leverage. Scrubbing bugs. And while Robbie was cleaning the car, I had bought some gas station breakfast burritos. Heat level, three and a half thermometers. <laughs> not bad. I mean, it's bad. It's just not spicy. spicy. <laughs> This is like a uh, bunker food when you're huddled down in a bunker and everything's frozen. And oh then man, you just... that's one of the most unpleasant culinary experiences I've ever had. <laughs> it's like if you cooked a burrito and then you steamed it. <laughs> another day, another example of our sad wrapped food being far less appealing than the stunning mountain scenery all around us. We headed northeast, and as we drove, we started seeing snow-capped mountains peeking through the hills to the east. More and more, the verdant hills parted to reveal stunning mountains, which had snowfields that intermingled with lush-looking forests. Uh, this is the Maroon Bells area. Wow, I mean, look at this. This looks like the Alps out here. Yeah. 
This does look like another country. And even more exciting for me was our next destination. So we're heading to this hot spring and Thomas is, for some reason, incredibly cynical about it. He keeps saying, I think it's just a puddle on the side of the road. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> Andrew's making it sound like it's this like lush paradise of, no, of like just springs kind of like shooting up and just like kind of touching and cleaning him all over and like someone comes and dangles grapes above his head. Never said that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the side of the road, what? Yeah, that's what I said, it's a puddle in the side of the road. But it's also just a river. Yeah. My understanding is there's a hot spring that feeds into the river and there's hot water and there's been rocks set up so that you can go into that without the cold water coming in. Oh. You can smell the sulfur smell already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We made our way down to the hot springs where a few other bathers were enjoying themselves. Yeah, it's like right here. Yeah, feels like 100 springs. plus degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah it gets here, super hot over here. Here's like 80 or something. So what do you think? So it, it, is a puddle to, <laughs> it is a puddle next to the road, but this is yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you know what would be fun? Going into the cold and yes. then get into the warm <laughs> Just don't get swept away. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna be here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's really cool. Ah, ah, you sprayed it on me. <laughs> oh. oh, that's good. It's like extra warm now. <laughs> <laughs> this specific thing is what I live for. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> How is it? <laughs> Doesn't that feel phenomenal now? <laughs> It's not so much phenomenal, it's that it feels extreme relief. <laughs> yeah. yeah it seems like it's uh, starting to rain. <laughs> yep. Which, I'm glad it's warm, but it's not great to... Yep. Yeah. This is not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> Alright. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Andrew wanted to stay here for an hour and a half. Well, there's not many Goldilocks areas in this pool right now. <laughs> That's kind of the problem. Dude, we are next to a raging river. Just an icy, raging river. <laughs> The warm water is coming from this little vent right here. And I think I'm blocking all of it, so Thomas is just oh, sitting in freezing water. It's like water. boiling water in oh, my sorry. face. <laughs> I think I got another two minutes. <laughs> oh, actually, oh, that's pretty good. I think I found a sweet spot. Well, I think you're in like the best part. Of yeah. Yeah. I'm having fun. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm having great fun. Oh, this is great. Okay. I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> Look at the view behind us, too. This is a solid 8 out of 10. Yeah, this was 8 out of 10 roadside attraction. <laughs> we could always go to the hot springs in Glenwood. We could try that, we got plenty of time. I think we might have to do that. I got the taste for hot springs now. I think Andrew and I were both right. We didn't last much lower than 20 minutes. It was a little hole in the side of the road but it was also really awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like the middle ground is exactly what this was. <laughs> Everyone was right. That was fun. <laughs> we now continued north towards the town of Carbondale. Thankfully, the rain quickly cleared. And we were once again beneath clear blue skies. Okay, this is a city called Carbondale. Very nice little city. We're going to get some coffee right now at Bonfire Coffee. We stepped into the coffee shop and ordered some drinks and pastries. I got the matcha latte as my uniform dictates. <laughs> oh, that's good, yeah. And this is a lemon herb scone. Lemon herb? Mm. Tastes like it has like rosemary or thyme in it or something. Mm. Oh man, I love banana bread. Mm. This is too sweet, not too sweet. Combined together, that is perfect, baby. <laughs> too sweet and not too sweet? Well, then we know what we have to do. Combine the two. It's actually quite good. <laughs> After our brief coffee break, we made our way back to the car, stopping here and there to admire the town's art. We left town and were greeted with more stunning views of snow-capped mountains and red hills. Now, we pass through Glenwood Springs, making our way towards South Canyon. Uh, at the last hot springs, there was a dude who was living in his van. He's like, oh, if you want a good hot spring, go up there. So we're 
on our secret tip, there's another one up here, which is supposed to be even nicer. We, we actually did look this up ahead of time. <laughs> but well, we got confirmation that yeah, it's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> We arrived at the hot spring and followed a small trail to the pools. Well, this is a little hot spring adventure. The pool was a bit murky looking, but it was much more consistently warm. This is way nicer than the last one. <laughs> it's actually warm. <laughs> Full body submersion. <laughs> it's a little hotter out now, so it's... Oh, that's true. <laughs> Let me see how much I can get submerged without my orifices. No, that's as far as I went. Look at this. Look at this beauty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. you have a good day. It was quite a bit hotter outside now, so we decided to get out and take a dip in a nearby stream to really appreciate the contrast of the hot springs warmth. Unfortunately, I think the sun has already warmed me up. Yeah. <laughs> After getting back in the pool, Robbie wanted to see how warm the water was at its source. Oh, yeah, I could feel it. Keep going. Be brave. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. We're past this little rock barrier. It's quite hot. <laughs> you guys got any thoughts? No thoughts. <laughs> All and thoughts have left yeah. the building. <laughs> I feel like a capybara. After our dip, we hopped out and got dressed, then explored around the area a little bit. Nearby were some smaller, less appealing looking pools. Then we made our way back to the car, taking in the stunning scenery as we hiked. We now headed back to Glenwood Springs, where we would split up. We were only able to get one permit to hike the nearby area called Hanging Lake, so Robbie would head there while Andrew and I explored the town. All right. All right, I think I'm good to go. Godspeed, good luck. Thank you. See you, Thomas. Let us know how it is. All right, see you soon. Enjoy the lakes. Okay, I'm off. It's about a 15 minute drive. I should get there just before noon. As Robbie drove off, I spotted an interesting plant nearby. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna try one of these cherries on this lovely cherry tree. Mm, nice and sweet with a little bit of tartness, quite delicious. Next, we'd hike to the town's oldest cemetery, which had some infamous residents. One that you've probably heard of is Doc Holliday, who's involved in the OK Corral. We'll, we'll talk more about him later. And then Kid Curry, who's another uh, you know infamous outlaw, is also buried here as well. When you think of classic American, Mountain towns, you gotta to think about the outlaws of the West. It's kinda of cool that they have this mountain trail right in the town. Apparently the cemetery used to be lower, but they had to move all the, all the tombs and all the graves to a higher elevation because they were concerned about water runoff. Man, you're already sweating. Feeling the altitude. <laughs> We've done no hiking I know, trip, I know. And it's suddenly just hitting us both. Yeah. When I heard about the trail going to the grave, I just envisioned like, a little dirt path through a forest, because that's just what I'm used to when I think of like historical cemeteries in the east. I kind of forgot we're in a very mountainous region for a second. <laughs> On our way up, we saw an interesting sight. There are all these ribbons tied to this tree. It's like, you know, almost looks like something out of Tibet or got some shoes hanging, some doggy bag Ooh. scrunchies, and then a dream catcher. It's a lighter too. As we examined the tree, some passers-by told us about its backstory. Yeah, it's actually one one woman. She lives at the bottom of the hill. I think she started it as something that was therapeutic for her to go through her cancer treatment. And so every day she'd go up there, she'd tie a prayer, tie a name, tie a wish to it. She volunteers at the local children's hospital here, and she would write the names of the kids and their wishes and then walk up the hill and tie it to that tree as well. We've read that she has since become cancer-free and is doing charity work, providing free dental care to children. The trail led to the top of a hill where we saw the historic cemetery. We strolled quietly through the cemetery, which had a peaceful, soothing atmosphere, thanks to the surrounding nature and the warm summer weather. Eventually, we found the memorial for Doc Holliday. At the base of the memorial, people had placed flowers, small bottles of bourbon, and betting chips, as he was known for being a gambler. We took in the scenery around us as we headed out of the cemetery. Along the way, we passed by the tombstone for Kid Curry, the other famous outlaw who rode with Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And speaking of Western films. So have you heard of the Western movie Red Sun? No. So that's a movie 
starring Charles Bronson and Toshiro Mifune. This is literally how we're dressed right now. We are, we're the bargain bin version of those. <laughs> so this plant looks really familiar to me. It reminded me of lamb's quarters back in the eastern U.S., which is a wild edible plant that grows. Even in cities, you'll find it. It's a really delicious plant that you can cook and eat. I'm not exactly sure what species this is, but I do know it's in the same family, which is the amaranth family. So I'm kind of curious if this would also be edible because it looks really similar. So growing here is some sort of a maple tree. Even though the leaves don't look like your typical maple, they're opposite branching and they've got these classic maple seeds on them. And fun fact, all maple seeds are actually edible, although some taste better than others. So I'm gonna give this a quick taste test. I'm trying to peel this outer layer off because sometimes that can be a little bitter. All right, see how this tastes. Not nearly as good as the other ones I've had. I had some that were nice and tender and they almost tasted like edamame. This one tastes like you're eating a really hard leaf. <laughs> Look at these cherries up here. Ooh. Oh, whoa, those ones are really bright. There's some apples there too. Back down the mountain, we follow the path into a tunnel. Wow, this uh, town exploration is much more interesting than I expected it to yeah, be. I was not expecting this. This is so cool. <laughs> wow. As we wandered, I saw some more interesting plants growing in someone's yard. So fun fact, it's not just in the wilderness where you can find wild edibles. This little garden here has some edible daylilies where you can eat the unopened flowers and some hyacinth where when they're just coming up in shoots in the springtime, you can cook those and eat them as well. So we just passed by an American linden tree that was still flowering. That tree has edible leaves and you can use the seeds as a medicinal property in tea and things like that. So as we were coming down the mountain, I saw that there's something here I think we got to try. Very appropriate, but it's a little further ahead in downtown, so uh, we'll keep it a surprise for now. It's not that Wendy's right there, is it? <laughs> is it this talk area? No. Is it this yard sale? No. Now, we near Thomas's mysterious surprise. All right, so the surprise isn't actually Doc Holliday's Tavern, it's what's inside Doc Holliday's Tavern. Huh. I grow ever more intrigued. Okay. I have no idea what to expect. Meanwhile, so I have not looked at any pictures online really, so I have no idea what to expect. But considering what's surrounding me right now, man, it must go somewhere crazy. All right, I think this is it. Just gotta show my permit and I'm good to go. Now, just okay. for the bridge is where it starts. Okay, cool. Thank have you. a great day. Thanks. Okay, I'm assuming we're going somewhere up there. Probably not up there. We'll find out. The paved path took me deeper into the canyon. Nearby was a wide rushing river, and all around me were impressive cliffs soaring high into the sky. What especially stood out were the different strata of rock on the cliffs. You know, all of these layers really makes you realize with a fresh brain that all of this has been here for so long before you, and will be here for so long after you. What if like, long after humans are gone, this is still here, and some alien civilization comes and sees this. As I hiked, I noticed some cicadas resting in a nearby tree. Wow, that's I-70 right there. Now, I came to a small dirt path. Okay, looks like this is it. I'm assuming that this little stream right here is coming from the water up there, and it's already looking quite steep. The rocky trail now led me uphill, deeper into the canyon. Okay, first impressions, it is quite steep. It is also quite crowded, so it makes sense that they have the permit system here. Pretty beautiful though. The scenery was already beautiful, but the clicking cicadas was slightly unsettling. You know, this does feel vaguely like I'm in The Last of Us. God, these bugs are just everywhere. I continued hiking along the rushing water and before long came to a sign along the trail. Quarter mile in. You can see up there, some of those trees were burned. So the reason why I dropped them off 
and drove here myself is because apparently the weather conditions can change pretty rapidly and you need to have a way to get out yourself so they don't want you dropping anybody off and then having them hike out here and then getting stuck. Thankfully, it was a clear sunny day, but with how much water was already rushing through the canyon, it was easy to see how inclement weather could be bad news. As I was coming up, somebody who was coming down told me that it would be mostly shaded on the way up. It feels fantastic in here. Wow. The path kept climbing, taking me right along another cascade of water. And nearby was a survey marker. 0.93 miles from the car, currently at 6,559 feet elevation. So, as I just said, from the car, I'm almost a mile away. Or from the start of the actual trailhead, and now a half mile. I think it's just one mile up, so just another half mile to go. Whenever you see a sign like that, that usually means you're in for a little bit of hurt. You can see here, you could go straight up, but that's only if you cut the switchbacks. At least I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna zigzag up this way. Yep, here we go. You know, even without what I'm assuming to be a great reward at the top of this hike, this is still a fantastic trail. It is really hard to believe that we're hiking right in this valley in between these massive cliffs. Definitely making your work for it. I think I see the three quarter mile marker up ahead. More cliffs and cascades came into view as I hiked. And nearby was an old forest hut. This shelter apparently was built in 1938, but I'm guessing that that's a new coat of paint because that looks quite fresh. Further ahead, the trail led me right next to a cliff face that had some interesting rock formations. Whoa. Okay, we gotta be close now. Obviously right now it's fine, but there are signs all over this trail that this place gets some pretty extreme weather, or at least some extreme water. I mean, look at this. As it turns out, Three years ago, the trail was temporarily closed due to flash floods and mudslides. One mile. Today, thankfully, the trail was in good condition. I followed it into the sunlight where it eventually led to a small overlook of the canyon. Wow. Holy cow. Somewhat dizzying. Okay, let's keep going. Woo! Oh, I think we made it. I think we have made it. I think we'll check out the waterfall second. Check out the lake first. Water is crystal clear. Gossamer curtains of waterfalls were draped over the rocky bluffs that surrounded this lake. And each waterfall fed into the crystal clear, turquoise colored waters that make Hanging Lake so unique. So apparently the color is from mineral deposits and the fish are not native here. They introduced the fish and apparently they're thriving now on this extremely clear and clean water. Wow, pretty impressive.
lake was mesmerizingly beautiful and mysterious. It was incredible that such an amazing sight was hidden away in this canyon, its waterfalls always flowing whether or not someone was there to see it. But now, it was time to continue on. Okay, let's go up to the top here. There's a waterfall I think you can get behind. Or maybe you just get behind these waterfalls. I'm not sure. Okay, let's see here. Spouting rock waterfall 200 yards. You could kind of see this one from down there. And it seemed like it was pretty impressive. Just passed the guy and he said it was very interesting. He's never seen one like it before, so. Whoa, that is a big boy. Woo! You can feel the water spray from back here. The spouting rock waterfall flows through holes in the limestone rock. Behind it, the stone had been eroded into a recessed cave, similar to ones we've explored in the eastern U.S. This is truly a dizzying amount of water. I don't know if it comes across, but it is extremely loud here. My watch is telling me that it's 90 decibels right now. Woo! Wow, I have seen a lot of very impressive waterfalls and this one still impressed me. It's actually quite a difficult hike, but that lake and this waterfall, absolutely worth it. I feel like I'm deaf. <laughs> the strength of that waterfall contrasted against the peace of this lake here is crazy. Yeah, so I've been hiking for about an hour and 40 minutes. I think I had three and a half hours that you're allowed to be up here, but I wanna hurry up and get back down anyway so that Thomas and Andrew aren't waiting too long. Man, it's too bad they weren't able to come here, but wow, totally worth it. Awesome. Okay, no reason to dilly-dally. Let's get down the mountain. Hopefully, Thomas and Andrew won't be too disappointed in what they were doing. And I hope they found something good to do. Because <laughs> I do feel like I was the lucky one this time. Back in Glenwood, Thomas was taking me to his surprise. You're about Who's to. Got the balls? Oh! Oh, that's what we're doing here. <laughs> I was about to be like, did you just text a bunch of random people to like read us? No. Okay. This is very serendipitous. Wow, that is crazy. Look to see what's right at the top here. Thomas, you always have the best surprises. I gotta say that. Natural hot springs, Rocky Mountain oysters, random strangers. <laughs> yeah, in hindsight. It was really obvious, actually. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I didn't think about that until I heard them shouting, who's got the balls? <laughs> this bar is called Doc Holliday's Tavern. So Doc Holliday actually died in the building right behind us oh, here. Oh, wow. See, it used to be the Glenwood Hotel was behind us, I think. You got Doc Holliday actually right behind me here. Is that actually him? That's Doc Holliday, yeah. This is awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Ah, cheers. These are great mugs. We enjoyed our cold beers amid the tavern's rustic atmosphere. Before long, our Rocky Mountain oysters arrived at the table to the cheers of the rowdy bar patrons. Our Rocky Mountain oysters came with some waffle fries and dipping sauce. But these oysters weren't from the sea. Alright, so these are Rocky Mountain oysters, which, for those who don't know, go Google it. These actually, I mean, they look good, but they're like sliced it. and deep fried. Yeah, you ready? Should, yeah. Should we dip them or just let's, let's have it raw? raw. Yeah. 
I'm having more of a visceral reaction of disgust than I thought I would. You are? I mean, I'm still enjoying it. <laughs> After Andrew was done <laughs> rationing why his food tasted bad. But I think just the thought of a cross-section of that. It just tastes like a solid, textureless piece of meat, kind of. But something about that seems a little off. It just hurts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Let's try it with some ranch. If you didn't know any better, you might think it was like a cross section of a sausage or a hot dog or something like that. I'll be honest, I don't want to think about it any more than I need to. <laughs> oh, they actually have a cocktail sauce. cocktail sauce. It's actually quite good with that. Well, cocktail sauce is kind of like cranberry sauce with turkey, you know what I mean? Like it adds that extra tanginess or something. The more I eat these, the more I like them. They're not bad. There's no weird taste or anything. This is hilarious. <laughs> Now, Robbie showed up, and we had asked the rowdy crowd to chant something special for him. Physically exerting <laughs> the trail itself. <laughs> oh my god. It was hilarious. I was walking up the sidewalk and this dude was like, Yo, are you thirsty? And I was like, am I about to talk to this dude? And I was like, all right. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm thirsty. He's like, where are you going up here? And I was like, uh, the saloon my, where my buddies are. And he's like, which one? I was like, this one right here. He's like, oh, okay. Can I get a drink with you? And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I don't know, man. And then I walk in, and then I'm still trying to be like, dude, just please go away. And then as soon as I come in, I'm just lambasted by sound. Oh. Wow, that was hilarious. Did you try it? Oh, yeah. I mean, does it just taste like... Yeah, it's fine. It tastes fine. Chewy. Bad texture. Cold. Still chewing. <laughs> it's not bad. It's like you get a fried piece of meat. It's gonna be, it's gonna meet a certain level, but there's no reason to eat this. Thank <laughs> <laughs> God. I thought I would like those Rocky Mountain oysters more than I did, but oh, that is phenomenal! Wow. Our trip through Colorado hadn't been quite what we expected. Instead of a mountain hike, we experienced rowdy crowds, dance parties, and all sorts of tomfoolery. And although it wasn't our usual style of exploring nature, this trip was filled full of fantastic memories and fun experiences. And with the many varied natural wonders of Colorado, from sweeping dunes and red cliffs to grassy meadows and snow-capped mountains, you can't help but feel that our world is filled with awe-inspiring beauty and amazing people to share it with. Before that, I'm gonna fall asleep on the flight, but when I get home, 
I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably, uh... You're going to direct an independent Japanese film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to compose the next Final Fantasy theme song. <laughs> Alright guys. Alright, bye Thomas. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your time. Alright, see you Thomas. See you Thomas. Planning on reading some classics? <laughs> no, I already have a book actually. <laughs> that I'm probably gonna not read until I'm gonna sleep. These are nice looking bags. The question is how functional they are though. Andrew, did you know I like a good bag? <laughs> they might as well be bags worth. <laughs> I mean, look at these. Look at that bag. Dude. These are some. Don't you want that bag? This. You don't even know what really you put in it. Yeah. <laughs> I've had this backpack since the last time I was in Colorado, actually. Oh, so yeah, I got this yeah, for that yeah, trip. Yeah. It's one of the best bags I've ever rolled. It's a solid bag. Yeah. So, got some dental, dental floss stitching on it <laughs> to repair some stuff. <laughs> That's it. What? Final frontier. Yes. <laughs> Back to the Midwest. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Okay. Godspeed. Good luck. See you around. I'm going over there. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to hit the like button and also consider checking out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash adventure. You get early access to the videos, bloopers, commentaries, live streams. Being a patron is the best way to support us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. No, not in my room, in here! In here! Gavin Ryan, back from Paris. Ryan, what a nightmare. No, right there, no, right there! What is with you guys? I've got a sandwich in there. I want all those bags open. We're looking till we find it. Oh, hey, Mary and Gigi. 
Uncle Gavin's back. Oh, Sarah Kitsune. Uh, Brian Kitsune? Okay. Oh, oh. Brother Brian, this is the best sandwich I ever ate. It's a baguette with brie and butter. I had four of these damn things every day I was there. You gotta try this. Oh, this is incredible, guys. Mm. <laughs> you know what this reminds us of? You know why we like this so much? <laughs> it reminds me of Sue and Tom down by the river. <laughs> My God, you're right. Am I right? Oh, no wonder. Am I right? Mmm. Do you know why we like this so much? <laughs> oh, babe, this cabin in the woods is exactly what I needed after winning all state football game. You know, this is what I'm talking about. This is what we need. Come on, babe, let's go. But Sunshan Huang, aren't you worried about the axe murder that's been seen three times in the area over the last two days? <laughs> babe, Madeline Holly, you know there's no such thing as axes. We're totally fine out here. I mean, look at this place. Aren't Joey and Mella gonna regret not coming here after all? Oh, that's right, I forgot, axes aren't real. Okay, well, can I make you some coffee? How about some water? Or would we like some alcohol? Babe, let's have all the alcohol. That's right, all the alcohol. We're too young to drink alcohol. That's bad, we shouldn't do that. There could be an ax murderer out there. <laughs> I already told you, there's no such thing as axes. What? Would anyone like to play chess? Babe, Samwar One is the ax murderer. No! This is it. This is what? If I take one more step, Mr. Dan Vulcans, this will be the farthest away from home I've ever been. Let's go, James Rakitsky. This is it. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. This is it. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. This is it. If I take one more step, It'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. This is it. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. This is it. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. This is it. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. Dritis, Chris, Higginbottom, Ren, Anivet, Christina, Alvarez, Brian, Aussie, Yama, Gata, Jenna Spitzer, and Matisse Vicar, Kelsey, Gadritis, Chris, Higginbottom, Ren, Anivet, Christina, Alvarez, something, something, I forgot the name, we gon' keep going with the chip too.
apologize for that being the worst shout out I've ever recorded. Time to hold on tight, not be afraid to abandon ship. Here we go. I hope he's okay.